Good evening, traders. It is Sunday, the 14th of August. This is for the mon uh, Monday, the week commencing Monday, the 15th of August, 2022. Let's have a look at the major currencies, the uh, dollar index. Let's have a look here. So very, very interesting formation on the weekly chart there. Uh, we failed to break the high last week. We came down. We're still staying above the 105 level, um, but it's not a strong finish. So that, that introduces now the possibility of price continuing lower. We'll see. Obviously, there's plenty of still, still plenty of dollar buyers. Uh, the daily is trying to stay above this 105 level and we have to see if it breaks that uh, trend. There's no bullish divergence at this time. So not really seeing too many signs there of a stronger dollar returning. Um, what I'd like to see this week is to see if the euro can find support here um, at these highs here around 102.50. Uh, that weekly uh, now looking good. So what I did want to see here was to see that weekly, see the price move and come up here, hit this level of support and test it for resistance. The question now is, will we see a continuation to the downside? So really there's quite a lot to be said for if price breaks the low of here. So that would be uh, if we see price break below 101.59. Alternatively, if we get a nice little bullish buy up here and we can push up and break the high, we're going to see a deeper continuation. All right, so that's all looking quite interesting. That now, versus last week where I was saying all the technicals were pointing to a stronger dollar, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Something wasn't quite adding up. This time around now, it's kind of more of a 50-50, meaning that uh, we're still waiting to see if that dollar is going to resume. You can even see here with cable, it's struggling to uh, close above these levels, trying, um, and it's a little bit weak on that monthly side as well, but it is absolutely trying to do that. So, for example, this is what I want to see. I want to see if we do break above these previous highs starting to follow through on this and if we do we're gonna i think we'll then start to see more selling on the dollar and we'll start to see some bigger moves and hopefully uh get out of a range kind of behavior and start to push on a little bit further so let's have a look at the aussie dollar against the us dollar beautiful really really very nice moves here you can see on the monthly also looking nice and bullish and that weekly now producing a high low high high so there's a lot here that that implies uh we're going to see a continuation to the upside there for the aussie dollar kiwi dollar as well same kind of thing here it's looking very very strong it's a really nice momentum uh, candle. Uh, it's slowing down a little bit in, in, in probably because it's likely going to have a daily retracement, but looking good there. So dollar yen as well. This is, of course, the one always bucking the trend. Dollar yen will do its own thing anyway. Always has, always will. Um, it's got a high low here, so it's attempting to change the trend to the upside, but it also failed. Doesn't mean it won't uh, succeed this coming week, if that's the case, but it did fail to follow through on that bullish candle. So the only reason I mention that is because this is a very, technically, this is a beautiful quality trend, and a setup like that should have had a follow through without, uh, you know, no problem at all. Interesting, though, the only comment I had to add to that was that the monthly had, uh, if we just kind of look at it here without any of that line, we just had a really nice break of the low. We are overextended. We do need to see price do a correction, and it could do a correction down as far as 120. It's possible that it could do that. Um, we'll see if that is going to be the case, however. So it is trying to continue, but it has already kind of broken that wall a bit. And so this is what I'd like to see this week. See us start to break below these lows, and then we would start to see this heading down towards 126 and a little bit further. So dolling in. You know, the possibility of a jing that is open, you can see dollar Swissy has now caved. It was just trying and pushing up and pushing up. We had a lot of uh, depletion here. We've got the solid downtrend of the weekly broke through support. Um, now we're going to see kind of what happens as it approaches these lows over here. But there's still a little bit of room for it to possibly go a little bit lower before possibly finishing as a bullish candle. So quite interesting to see that. Dollar cat as well, you can just see here again, I'll bring on those levels. Uh, also just suffering quite a bit trying to just really unable to get through that and last week i thought or this last week i thought we would push up through that we didn't we've actually felt and rejected it so all of that is great because it definitely introduces the possibility of a weaker dollar for now uh if we then have a look moving away from the majors have a look at dollar ruble nothing happening here i'm just keeping you know i just want to keep looking at a couple of others to see what else if there's anything of notes happening there you can see euro swissy continues to head below parity and just keeps going and going and going doesn't look like it's going to change at any point soon the furthest it has gone down in the past is down towards these sort of 842 levels um and so this to me is still then i guess i would lower my risk on it because it's definite bullish divergence it is certainly overextended and i do expect at some point to get a change in trend in this um, certainly within the next uh, four to six weeks if not in the next one or two weeks so looking to see if this will start to reject so Shorting opportunity is fine, but I would go with my reduced risk and certainly be more aggressive about taking profits there. Moving on to gold. Gold is doing really well, continuing to push up a little bit. It's still within that weekly downtrend, I might add. But it is also starting to look more and more range bound on that monthly as though it is pushing its way back up to the center, which puts it closer towards 1850. Um, and so there's some 
definite valid opportunities here, especially for this to continue up. This is a nice little bullish setup here, potentially a break above the high stop loss below the low and targeting up the next major level. Possibility for some money making opportunities there. Silver as well, also continuing to push a little bit higher. There's no divergence on all of this. It's got a beautiful swing low here. This looks as though it has a lot of freedom to head up towards $22. So let's see if that is the case. Copper is also starting to creep up a little bit here. It's kind of a bit overextended to the downside. Um, and yeah, it's also got some room to move to the upside there. So moving on to natural gas, and you can see this has been swinging wildly, and uh, we've currently got it just pushing back up towards the old highs. doesn't really mean that it'll succeed ultimately if it closes there, but it is creeping higher. And uh, actually, this is a relatively nice sort of sequential bar, so I think we're likely to see it just continue back up towards these old highs there. Let's move on to crude oil. So crude oil's putting on the brakes here, absolutely. Nice little bit of bullish divergence price action, looking more and more bullish. So what I'm looking, uh, and we did come down I'm satisfied I'll qualify that as touching 85 I'm pretty happy with that um, we could still creep down again and have increase in divergence continue and then have a shift in trend but I'm also at this point I'm relatively okay with this starting to work its way back up towards $100 and see if that's the case Brent as well produced that high low um, it hasn't corrected enough in my opinion so that'll be curious will we still get you know oil this week kind of hitting a little bit low before possibly recovering or will it already or has it already started its recovery from where it is as as far as I'm concerned, this is just kind of drifting and treading water sideways. It still hasn't had a decent correction, um, but it's possible that it's going to do that until the moving averages uh, catch up with it. So it's still above this uh, trend line here. In other words, it's just a bullish. I don't use trend lines in the traditional sense. It's just more of a bullish angle. It's still above that at this point in time. Cool. So sugar, this is a really nice solid base here. Strong bullish candle so far. All of this implies there's a downtrend here of low highs, low lows. It does imply that it's going to keep, it's going to attempt to keep pushing up. We'll see. Really got to see if it kind of works its way past this. But for the most part, I expect this to either do some minor retracements and continue up. And it's looking pretty strong there. Coffee as well. Coffee, you can see here again, um, you know, it's not just, it's an interesting, a lot of the commodities are starting to find their feet now. Could be seasonal things, uh, who knows, but uh, yeah, we start, you can see a lot of bullish rejection here. This is attempting to push a little bit higher and starting to push up. So possible room for moves to the upside there. Wheat has obviously slowed down as well on the side after a big correction after a very long period of time. It seems to be sort of stabilizing. And uh, so this week, I want to see what happens with this. We've got bullish divergence. I need to see this break above high. So again, I'll just put a little bit of a level in there and see if we can just get a break above that as a confirmation that there's a shift to the upside. Look at that cotton taking right off. You can see a series of increasingly larger uh, candles and a very strong finish here. So this is what I would have expected to happen with that dollar index and dollar yen, and it just didn't happen. We didn't get a, con a takeoff from there. It is going to struggle with resistance as it gets back up to here, but for now, it's looking pretty good. So again, closing right near the highs of each session here. So just looking very, very strong. Um, and again, I'd look for retracements and continuations to the upside. Okay, moving on to the global indices, right? So we've got a nice little uh, break above this uh, of these previous highs. We've started to push up. We're so far closing near the highs. The weekly candle closed near the highs of the session. We're approaching the 50 period moving average. So really, this is significant because once we cross over to the other side of the 50 period moving average, we are kind of back in a bull in a bull trend um, or in a bull market. So that's what I'm looking for this week, just to see us just continue up from that. Any kind of pullbacks into the into these previous lows, I would see them as buying opportunities for myself. At any rate, not financial advice, just looking for those. Really, really good, strong. Remember, I just put in a slightly gentle trend line here. Again, anything below this is more bearish. Anything above that is bullish. And again, once we cross over that 50 period moving average, uh, we've broken these previous highs. All of this is supporting the idea of a return so far. All of this is uh, supporting the idea of a return to a bull market, um, which is very much in line with uh, everything that we had here. So all of that looking good so far. NASDAQ, uh, again, also hitting its way up to that 50 period moving average, breaking above these previous highs. Um, I'd like it to you know, slow down a little bit and continue up, but actually at the rates it's recovering, uh, it might just continue to go up. So we'll see. So this week, just looking to see if there's any reasons for it to do any kind of normal retracements um, and then looking for entry opportunities to the upside, but looking nice and bullish. Mini Russell here as well, breaking above these highs, also looking really nice and bullish and interesting to see the 
the Russell, which has been choppy for a very long time, actually going back to almost all of 2021, finally having a bit of a correction seems to now be quite keen on continuing to the upside. So that's all looking very good. Um, we've got the uh, FTSE, which is looking choppy along the top. That's just normal. That's standard behavior here for it. It does need to have a bit of a correction, but it's working its way back up to the high. So for me, the question is going to be, how is it going to cope with these old highs? That monthly looks good. That monthly to me looks as though there's going to be a breakthrough and a continuation, and we're going to see uh, all-time highs on the footy. So that is looking good. At this point in time, that is what it appears to you. That's what its intentions appear to be. The DAX as well, also looking pretty good. It's still got that monthly downtrend. It's got a bit of a, this is a really nice double bottom here. And I expect this, it's, it looks good at this point in time. My expectation is to see it head up towards these previous uh, highs over here around the 14,730 market and, and 15,000 market. Continue, continue up from there. The NECA as well, starting to pick up a little bit of pace there as well. It's got, it's starting to break into new highs on the weekly. It's above the 50 period moving average. All of these are looking pretty good. The daily as well. So, you know, what sometimes happens is as bullish as everything is, the week that follows, you subsequently get a bit of a correction and the market takes a bit of a breather. So, yes, that could be the case this week. It could be, but uh, for the most part, all of this looks as though it is a return uh, to a bit of a bull market, or at least it is an attempt to get back over that line and then start and then start kind of working your way back up. But somewhere along here, I do expect a weekly uh, correction, ideally uh, after we get above the 50 and coming back down to test it from below. But what I also want to see is how the markets react when they tap that, if it becomes a bit of a setting for them and if there's a uh, you know a rejection off that coming down i'll have to address that next week okay looking at the equities of interest right so glencore as well very nice follow through so far all looking good we're sort of heading above these levels of support um for the most part all looking pretty good tesco uh, not succeeding s so much at this point in time. That weekly showing a bit of depletion in there and slowing down a little bit. Look how it's struggling to break above that 50 period moving average. Look at that. Just can't quite get over it. So I need to see it move and close above that and then there'll be a slight shift in its movement uh, to the upside. Not that I trade off the 50, but this is stuff you can just see. Um, again, got a nice color, uh, follow through on Amex. That's also looking pretty good. Let's just have a look at it on a uh, quarterly and see how that looks. Beautiful. Really nice correction. Almost back down to these old highs right there looks like it wants to go up how are they going to respond when they get up to the old highs if there's you know that's we're going to have to see part of the reason i think that the footy is going to go to new highs is because uh, we've still got a lot of room for the us ones before they get to the old highs but the uk one is right there so <clears throat> it's going to hit that ceiling a lot sooner and then we're going to see how it does from there so apple as well has obviously had a really good finish a really good recovery and looking good as well coming up into these highs so that's going to be the question what's going to happen if we haven't been here for a while we could ever uh, we could get you know get knocked back from it for a little bit and that's okay we could even come down a bit and then recover and that weekly then is in an uptrend um but uh, so I'm not really seeing any reason for alarm here. I'm even seeing a nice little bit of a turnaround and arc uh, starting to head up to the upside. We've got uh, AT&T continuing to get knocked down. So there's a couple here that I want to see. Just um, I've added them to the list because I want to know how they're kind of doing uh, in terms of, I guess, their value to uh, to not just shareholders, funny enough, their value to customers as a, as a, del as a business delivering. And AT&T has got a whole lot of stuff going on. So that's why I want to know how it's doing. Um, others would be, you know, Meta, Facebook. So there we go. This was was this last week. Talking about this being a really nice entry setup. So that has yielded a relatively decent two, I think it was a two and a half to one on that one so far. Um, looking really good. Nice follow through <clears throat> on this one. We've closed the other highs. Also looking good. It's got to get above that 50 period moving average. That's Berkshire Hathaway looking really good. Uh, BP gapping up. Look at that. Look closing near the highs as well. Coming back up into where it is here. So this is what I want to see this week is just see how it handles this and ideally if we can close over and above that level there. Exxon as well you can see also closing near the highs here and so a uh, little bit of a hanging man there we'll have to see how it does because that is going to be a this is going to be an area for it where it's going to struggle and i want to see how it does with that excuse me coca-cola right up against as high as beautiful little uh just this kind of move down let's let's reduce this to so 50 units look at that there we go and so here i want to see how we can continue up from that but this is it so if we can get some really positive news this week for example the mood sentiment is good we're going to push over that line we're going to see quite a few companies do that fedex uh which is just you know i'm a little bit disappointed i'm expecting this to continue up i really am and it's in a bit of a mess right now let's just see if what it's kind of trajectory has been like for the last few years this should be doing better than it is um what i can say though is 
this high is very close to this high. I do expect this at some point to start to push up a little bit higher, potentially break these highs. In other words, I'm leaning towards more bullish rather than uh, less bullish. Let's see how it goes. But it's also not super strong and healthy. Um, we've got General General Motors also looking really strong. Uh, I expect this to continue to push up. If it can break through this $39, $40 level, then I expect it to get up to $50. it has got some room to run. JP Morgan, also very, very nice, strong push off here. Looking good. It's got bullish divergence, closing near the highs. This is looking good so far. It's taken off after it's broken out of this consolidation. You know, again, all of these, or many of them, could do with some daily retracements, daily corrections before continuing. But they might be so keen to get back up towards those old highs, they might just keep going. We'll have to see how that uh, goes this week. Bullish divergence here, I'm expecting in this to continue up absolutely right we'll break through the start to accelerate and head up towards 200 on meta so meta looks like it's going to be able to get its way out of this at least back up towards these old highs here we'll see morgan stanley looking good really good i think the next stop up here is back up at the old highs whether it's in the next uh next week or not is 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 i doubt i doubt they're gonna but that's where it's going same thing again here we've got netflix also starting to push up a little bit higher these have shed so much uh so much value um that i, I it's difficult for me to imagine how they're ultimately going to get back up to the old highs but they may well do it uh disney's pulled rabbits out of a hat and i know that disney's now overtaken netflix for the most uh, number of subscribers or at least more subscribers than netflix so the question is uh, but i also hear they're not necessarily making money on the stuff so i want to know how that I, interested to see how that business will turn out this looks really nice and uh, bullish that daily looking good weekly looks good it's also had a bit of a correction to the downside so this level here at 192 is a bit of a bit of a bump but it, once it can get over that 200 it should be fine paypal starting to turn things around as well it's got to work its way back up to these previous levels 120 so everything's so far looking relatively nice and bullish um spider as well continuing to push higher looking good you know just aside from daily retracements uh, they should be fine just working their way up to those 50 period moving averages spotify also got to turn things around it's not moving up as much as i would like but it it does appear that that's very much where it's going to go and it's broken the previous week so we've got a confirmed uptrend on the weekly tesla uh back up at 900 struggling where it is here a little bit we i was just wondering if we are you know because there is always this fear that the inflation isn't gone yet obviously that you know i don't think people are wanting to spend this um and that inflation could still be here to stay now it's interesting could we learn to live with a bit of inflation possibly could it lead to stagflation yes that's also a possibility so if we're going to have some issues, um, then my expectation was to see if we would possibly start to, um, some, some of the charts would actually start to resume another leg down if that was going to be the case. And if that is going to be the case, then I expect to start to see most likely a monthly bearish candle. Um, something, you know, would have to be quite drastic or a very strong rejection on the weekly. Um, so until I see that, I'm going to maintain the bullishness, which is what the current mode that we're in. So Vanguard as well, coming back up to these old highs, they're looking good. All right, so most of these I'm very happy. Once that weekly crosses over that 50, especially on the indices, then we start to move into uh, the next game. Let's have a look at some of these, uh, uh, these some of the uh, treasuries. And this is interesting. It's sort of a bears of returns. We've had a lot of bears over the last when we've had a lot of growth. Had quite a bit of, uh, quite a few of the bears uh, kind of selling in our heavy selling. That it does appear to be struggling. So not really expecting much from it this week. Might hit a little bit low, but for now it's sort of a little bit range bound. Let me just go and put a bit of a box around that and just see how we fare. Actually, I'm going to raise the box up here. So let's just see how we cope with that and what happens in this area. So that makes that one a little bit less predictable. Eurobund has had a good correction, produced the bearish candle here. If we break through the low of this, again, my expectation is to see this to continue back into that downtrend and starting to hit a little bit lower. It's already got a downtrend on the daily. So that is going to be interesting to see how that ultimately goes. Um, and then moving on to cryptos, uh, we've got the uh, the crypto starting to break about the high. I do think you can see quite a bit of uh, depletion here, struggling, certainly. Uh, not super strong, similar to, you know, kind of like uh, Spotify or PayPal and Netflix with it sort of drifting around near the bottom. But if we do see a nice boost this week, I would expect them to push back up and certainly try to hit up towards these previous, uh, these previous levels. Ethereum doing very well at the moment. So Ethereum is recovering faster than Bitcoin and uh, looking good. Again, it's at a bit of a level here. You can see it's 
overextended, beautiful here. For me, I like the idea of looking for this to come back down to the moving averages, back into these old highs and looking for a very nice buy opportunity, which is gonna be somewhere in this area most likely. Um, possibly, actually, I'm gonna say somewhere in that area because it's probably gonna just come in, tap and then head off uh, if it's good, keen to go. So that looks quite good. Uh, Cardano, yeah, struggling here a bit as well. So this tells me um, a lot more day trading going on, not so much end of day stuff happening and not a lot of commitment. So people trading it during the day and then exiting their positions, kind of see the move up and then the fall, the move up and the, more, and the kind of going with the flow, but not really committing to it much longer than that. Um, uh, Binance as well. Also beautiful. So this is a really nice setup here to see this come back, head down back into these highs. So this is where I'd like to see you come in this week. Are we going to get something in that area as a good opportunity to carry on up? But it's also significant worth noting on that weekly beautiful pullback into these previous levels of support. That's what it's battling. Um, is it going to get a heavy knockback or not? Because that monthly looks fine. So the monthly is at the bottom of the range and it should be able to breakthrough. Should be able to do that. Will it be able to do it this week? We'll see. So if we pull back down and continue up, will we be able to close by the end of the week back up above that level or will we fail? Because failing, especially if we have failure across the board with a lot of these charts in this next week when everything looks okay, then that's worthwhile paying attention to. Solana, um, again, also nice rejection here. So quite a few of these have kind of finished their week off with a bit of a rejection there and possibly looking for some pullbacks. But I'm expecting, I mean, look, that's not the most bullish thing I've ever seen, but I'm looking to see if we'll get some of that enthusiasm when it does ultimately return. When it does, I expect it to accelerate really quickly. Um, but that could be a month from now, two months from now. But let's just see if this can start to just creep its way, just continually breaking slightly higher and higher. But it is certainly now, to me, more bullish than bearish. So there we have it, ladies and gents, some uh, interesting stuff. We seem to be, uh, we've got a change in the markets from the last two or three months, um, and it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. So this week, I'd look to expect to see some good opportunities in line with bullish indices, bullish commodities, and uh, potentially, possibly a weaker US dollar. We'll see, and a weaker US dollar is certainly going to help the other things as well. And that's it. So please uh, trade carefully, responsibly, and have a great week.